Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to a live stream of evening prayer from St. Michael and Holy Angels Facebook page. Today is the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany, and we will use the propers for the same. Our worship begins on page 60 with the opening sentence for Epiphany. The Lord has declared his salvation. His righteousness he has openly displayed for all the nations to see. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God our Saviour, and praise your name for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. So we see the prayer of intention. As we welcome those who are joining in. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Let us see the canticle, O Gracious Light. O Gracious Light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun, and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. And so in the moment of silence, let us allow God to call to mind those things which we have done that were not pleasing to him. So Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Would you say, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so upon us by your Spirit, that we may live and save you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins, and serve you with a quiet mind, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So welcome to those now joining in, as we turn to our office hymn, hymn number 508, a charge to keep, I have, of God to glorify CPWI 508 <clears throat> A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, a never dying soul to save, and fated for the sky, to serve the present age, my calling to Trust betray 
Welcome to those who are joining in. And as usual, thank you for being here, for singing along with me. Our Psalms for this evening's office Psalms 19 and 46. Psalms 19 and 46. <coughs> Psalm 19 begins on page 490. Psalm 46. Page five two seven. We begin Psalm nineteen. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Psalm 46, page 527. God is our strength. Sorry, God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea, though the waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams have made glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado, and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes wars to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear 
and burns the shields with fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And so we turn to our first lesson. From the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 62. This is 6 to 12. Isaiah chapter 62. This is 6 to 12. Upon your walls of Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm. I will not again give your grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have labored. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up. Build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign to the people. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth, Say to daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. And they shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord, and you shall be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So we turn to page 67. As we say, the Magnificat. Page 67. We welcome those who have recently joined us. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in you, O God, my Savior. For you have looked with favor on your lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. You, the Almighty, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. You have mercy on those who fear you from generation to generation. You have shown strength with your arm and scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things, and the rich you have sent away empty. You have come to the help of your servant Israel, for you have remembered your promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second lesson is from Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 3, beginning at verse 14. Paul's first letter to Timothy, chapter 3, verses 14, reading on to chapter 4, verse 10. Paul writes, I hope to come to you soon, 
but I am writing these instructions to you so that if I am delayed, you may know how one ought to behave in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and bulwark of the truth. Without any doubt, the mystery of our religion is great. He was revealed in flesh, vindicated in spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among Gentiles, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Now the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will renounce the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of lies whose consciences are seared with a hot iron. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from food, foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected, provided, provided it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and old wives' tales. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, <coughs> Godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of all acceptance, for to this end we toil and struggle because we have set because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Saviour of all people, especially of those who believe the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so we turn to page 55 as we see the Nunc Dimitas of the Song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In his letter to Timothy, <coughs> Paul gives instructions on how he is to lead the church and he is warning him to be aware of those who are teaching false doctrine. And this is a common theme of Paul to all of his to most of his his recipients. Remember the church has now begun, <coughs> is now starting. And there will be those who will still be holding on to the beliefs, some of which were pagan, and because it was a multicultural society, and some of those were pagan beliefs, and <coughs> it would have been hard for them to let go of those beliefs and practices, even though they have come to, to know Christ and to follow Christ. So Paul regards them as those whose consciences are seared with a hot iron. Now, those who, the people who are seared with a hot iron are, or the things that they, are animals, are cattle, to, and, and slaves, sometimes slaves were seared with a hot iron so that they, know who 
to whom, to whom they belong so that in case they try to escape uh, or run, run away they, and will found, they will they could be returned to their their master, their rightful master. So, so he is likening those people to just to be enslaved. They're, they're still enslaved by their old beliefs and by their old cultures and by their old ways. And he is saying to not listen to them, to, to that they need to break free from that. And he lists some of the the doctrines that they subscribe to, which is forbidding marriage and demanding abstinence from foods. And we know that um, the people believe, they now believe that all foods are permissible to eat, but Jews still abstain from certain foods. But for Christians, it is believed that there is no such um, restriction uh, as long as it's, as God has created it, it is good and provided it is received with thanksgiving for it is sanctified by God's word. So in other words, you th when you, you thank God for what you are about to receive and you ask God just to bless it and sanctify it, it's like your, your grace before me is in other words. So Paul is instructing Timothy in the proper management and teaching of the new church. And so it is it's a, it's a hard thing because it's, it's like if things are now starting out, so it will take a little bit of time for people to become accustomed to the new way and for people to to learn how to be good Christians and to become accustomed to the, the Holy Spirit in their lives. Remember the Holy Spirit, the the advent of the, the Holy coming of the Holy Spirit is also a relatively new thing in, in, in Christian world. And so people are not accustomed to living and dealing with the Spirit. So it is a whole new kind of uh, teething, going through some teething problems. So there will be lots of instructions to be followed and lots of there will be lots of need for guidance. And <clears throat> it's not unlike the church today when we get new people or new members, they will need instructions and they will need guidance. And this is why we try to instruct them from young. And so as, when that, as soon as they are baptized, we try to get them as soon as they are old enough, we try to get them into Sunday school and we advise parents and godparents to keep bringing them to church and get them accustomed to the church and get them to know the faith and by the time they reach the age of reason, they will decide for themselves to strengthen their faith in the service in the right of confirmation. And so it, it should not be that we are trying to rein them back in after a certain age because they have gone astray or because we have let them go, we have let them loose elsewhere and let them be exposed to all kinds of other doctrines and all kinds of other um, beliefs. And now that we find that they are not behaving like Christians are not behaving like they were taught, we are now trying to get them back. As the saying goes, you cannot bend the tree or bend the tree while it is young so that you won't have to break it. And so Paul is in this is what Paul is doing to Timothy, who is a young person, a young man, and so he's trying to instill in him the way the good Christian values and the ways of Christ so that he will have a solid foundation and that he will be able to lead the people of God properly. And so we too are to be aware of those among us and they are, they are also in the church, those among us who subscribe to, to false beliefs and those among us who, 
who are susceptible to what we call um, conspiracy theories and who believe everything that they hear going around just because it is interesting, just because it it is you know juicy and it's all sensational and who there are people who don't reason um they don't look they take into consideration the things that are told to them they don't think about them they don't reason them they don't compare them to what is said in in the scriptures and most of, most of all they don't consult someone who might know maybe a cleric or someone who may be educated in the scriptures they just want yes marlies they just believe whatever sounds good whatever sounds exciting and they take it and run with it and the more it is repeated and the more entrenched it becomes it the more it, the harder it is to wean them off of those false beliefs and that happens to people even in the church and so we must always be aware of or we must always be on our guard against such such things such doctrines always as paul says test the spirits always we, we not because people say that you know it's it's um or people claim that it this comes from the bible does it mean that people misinterpret the scriptures a lot and so we we have our intelligence we have our brains so we need to think some of these things through we need we need to think them out we need to reason them out one of the pillars of our anglican church is reason our church is based on scripture tradition and reason we think about those we think about things we discuss them we look at this what the scriptures say we look at what god is trying to say we look at what the the writer the the, the scripture is trying to say we don't take them and form our own theories from little evidence because because they sound good or because we want to believe it or because we it, it sounds like something that happened before or we heard it from somewhere else you know, we must use our intelligence and most of all we must be under the guidance of the holy spirit and jesus said the spirit will lead you into all truth and it, it just people like to believe things because they are fantastic and and sensational and, and as as nice as that they might sound or as much as we would like to believe that they could be true some of the most a lot of it is not true so let us test the spirits let us be aware of fanta uh, new fantastic doctrines and theologies that people are bringing and bounce them off just someone who you who you trust that knows the scriptures or, or you know has a good relationship with god talk to somebody don't just if something is troubling you if you you hear something and it sounds you know it sounds that like there might be a little bit of truth in it and even if it's uncomfortable talk to someone about it and and hear what they have to say pray about it reason as much as you as much as god allows you to and don't just fall for everything that you hear just some things to think about so we turn to page 69 as we say the apostles creed i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the power of the holy spirit Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living. So we had a break in transmission there. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today your daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach our leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and his servant with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us your will may be done. So we turn to page 161, as we say the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany. Page 161. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, creator of day and night, giving rest to the weary, renewing the strength of those who are spent, bestowing upon us occasions of song in the evening. As you have promised, sorry, as you have protected us in the day that is past, so be with us in the coming night. Free us from evil, sin, and fear. For you are our light and salvation and the strength of our life. To you be glory for endless ages. Amen. You see the collect for Sundays. O God of peace. You have taught us that in retaining and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your Spirit lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in a moment of silence, I invite you to offer your personal petitions to God. Lord, in your mission, hear our prayer. So we continue to pray for the world. We pray for an end to violence, war. We pray for those who are homeless, hungry. We pray for those who are oppressed. Lord, we pray for those who have lost their property because of human or natural disaster. We pray that we will send relief and assistance to them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray as for 
ourselves as we battle the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for an end. We pray that we will not be subject to any more variants, especially any more lethal variants. We ask that you continue to protect our frontline workers. We pray for those who have been infected. We ask you to lay your healing hands upon them. We pray that we will continue to be vigilant. We will continue to be disciplined and self-controlled and to do all that is necessary to protect ourselves and to stem the spread. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country for an end to crime, violence, corruption. We pray for accountability from our leaders and those in authority. Lord, we bring before you all those persons who have gone missing. We ask that wherever you are, wherever they are, you will be with them. Lord, we ask you to return them safely to their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are living in abusive situations. We pray for victims of domestic violence and sexual abuse. We pray for their healing mentally and emotionally. Lord, we pray that you will intervene in their situations and deliver them, that you will protect them until they find the means to, to be free from their situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have been affected, adversely affected economically, those who have lost their source of income, who have lost their employment. Lord, we pray that they will not end up destitute. We pray that they will find employment. We pray that you will help them not to be, not to give up, not to become, not to despair. Lord, send your spirit to help them in that, that they point of need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, for our leaders. We pray that we will be grounded in sound doctrine by your word and your commandments. We pray that we will allow your Holy Spirit to instruct us and to enlighten us. We ask that you protect us from false doctrines and false teaching. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially by violent situations. We pray for the families of those who have been murdered and for those who have died tragically by accidents. Lord, we pray that you will send your Holy Spirit <coughs> comfort and solace. Give them the strength to go on and to adjust to life without their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the souls of those who have died we pray that you will bring them more and more into your everlasting presence and that you will grant them eternal rest that light perpetual shine upon them Lord in your mercy hear our prayer we thank you with those who celebrate birthdays and other special anniversaries at this time we ask that you continue to protect them bless them Grant them health, strength, and prosperity, and keep them always close to you, 
loving you and acknowledging you for your goodness Lord in your love hear our prayer we continue to lift up our students and all those involved in our education system that they will be safe in their learning environment that you will protect them that they will observe all the health protocols and that they will be able to continue their in-person classes and resume their activities their social activities their extracurricular activities Lord, we ask that you continue to protect them and let them be safe Lord, in your mercy hear our prayer So before we end our act of worship, let us sing hymn number 528, <clears throat> Lord speak to me that I may speak, CPWI 528. <clears throat> Lord speak to me that I may speak. In living echoes of thy tomb, as thou hast thought, so let me seek thy living children lost and bloom. O lead me, Lord, that I may lead the wandering and the wavering feet. O feed me, Lord, that I may feed thy hungering ones with manna sweet. O strengthen me, that while I stand, firm on the rock and strong in thee, I may stretch out a loving hand to restless with the troubled sea. O oh, teach me, Lord, that I may teach the precious things Thou dost impart, and wing my words that they may reach the hidden depths of many a heart. O oh, give Thine own sweet rest to me, that I may speak with soothing power. A word in season has from thee to weary ones in needful hour. O fill me with thy fullness, Lord, until my very heart overflow in kindling thought and glowing word, thy love to tell, thy praise to show. Oh, use me, Lord, use me, burn me, just as thou wilt, and when, and where, until thy blessed face I see, thy rest, thy joy, thy glory share. Amen. To return to page 73, let me say the prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do measurably more than all we can ask or conceive. By the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So thank you, my brothers and sisters, for joining us at St. Michael and all our angels for the service of evening prayer. We continue to have a peaceful, restful night. 
as usual receive wash watch wear watch and pray so thank you again take care of yourselves take care of each other and we will see you again thank you.